we get started with a very warm <laughs> welcome um, from my side. Thank you so much, everyone listening in today as we speak about social media. And I think we have a great uh, trio here with me, you know, that gives that's going to give you tips and tricks and do's and don'ts on um, how you how you can leverage uh, social media overall. Um, most of you that are tuning in know that we host these webinars once a month. Every month it has a different topic and it's really targeted to help you run your business with super specific ideas. Um, and if you have other ideas of what you would always um, you know, love to hear about, just um, DM me on Instagram under Benny underscore uh, Frowine um, and uh, send me a DM so that with topics that you would like us to cover, um, I would really appreciate that. Um, because I don't, or you guys know better what you would love to hear about. Um, but before we, you know, uh, already collect new topics, let's stay with the social media topic of today. Um, and for that, I would love to start to introduce the three exceptional people, creative minds, business powerhouses, you know, this list could go on. Um, and I would love to start with uh, you, Kathy. Um, Kathy is the founder and the CEO of Kathy Quo Home. Kathy is a recognized TV personality, an award-winning interior designer, activist for female founders, and on top a mother of two. After graduating from Rhode Island School of Design with a degree in industrial design, Kathy began her career in the world of television, making a name for herself during the advent of home renovation shows. And in 2012, Kathy launched Kathy Quo Home to provide everything from design inspiration to flawless execution in one vertically integrated platform. Um, KKH is a retailer of high-end furniture and home decor supported by a robust interior design firm and a dedicated trade program. Kathy now leads one of the, I believe, fastest growing online platforms in the home and design industry. And everyone who's watching, you know, go there, check it out. It's really worthwhile. Um, your time. It's pretty amazing what Kathy has uh, created there. So Kathy, welcome and thank you very much for being on the panel today. Thank you so much for having me. Um, as the second person and panelist, um, I want to introduce a friend to everyone. Friend uh, Keenan, um, uh, you know, learned design from the best. She cut her teeth in fashion in New York, working at Ralph uh, Lauren. Um, with gained knowledge and excitement for design, Friend then uh, found her passion shifting from fashion to interiors and began working under Anthony Barada and Bill Diamond of Diamond Barada Design. In 2002, Friend and her husband met returned to their southern roots and settled in Birmingham, Alabama, where she helped launch Cottage Living Magazine as decorating editor. Uh, this established her unique and welcome presence as a creative contributor in and around Birmingham. Friend seeks to extract the essence of her clients in order to create an aesthetic that is uniquely theirs. Friend, it's great to have you on today. Thank you for joining. And it's great also to see you again. Thank you for having me, Benny. I'm excited to be here. Um, and then last but not least, Renee. Um, Renee Gaddis has been recognized as one of Naples, Florida's top interior designers for over a decade now. Her designs attract and inspire the area's leading residential properties, as well as top architects and home builders. Renee is known for her ability to work within a diverse lifestyle portfolio, ranging from coastal, contemporary to transitional, along with creating unique commercial spaces. Her work has been written up in numerous national magazines, including the Wall Street Journal, Architectural Digest. Renee is also a leading advocate for children with heart disease and spareheads fundraising efforts and research annually, um, though the American Heart Association and the Golizano Children's Hospital in Southwest Florida. Renee, also it's a pleasure to have you um, and uh, on here. And I love obviously your background of the Pine Hollyhock. Uh, thank you for putting this up today. Thank you, Benny. I'm so happy to be here. Um, and then last but not least, um, let me introduce myself. I'm Benny Frowine. Um, I'm Schumacher's president and the host of the webinar today. Um, so now that we've been through this amazing introduction of, uh, you know, three amazing people, um, I have one more logistical thing and then we dive right into the questions. Um, everyone who's watching um, has a Q&A button at the bottom of their screen. Um, if you have questions to the panelists, just um, 
you know, click on there, write your question into the Q&A section, and then I'll try to weave it in as it fits. If you try to make the question short, because I have to read, think, uh, speak uh, all at the same time, <laughs> it would really help me. Um, and yeah, I guess we just get started with my um, with my first question. And you know, social media. I mean, we've always been speaking about it. I mean, always about you know many years now. Um, but it really somehow kicked in when last year everything started with lockdown and the pandemic and so on. So, friend, I must might just start. Um, you know, in in Birmingham, yeah. when did you start social media and what motivated you to just like take this endeavor on? Well, um, it's actually a funny story. My um, associate, she's now senior designer, but at the time it was seven years ago. And uh, Sarah Walker told me, she came in one day and said, you have to do this. Like our peer, your peers are doing this. Everyone's documenting what they're doing and you need to be on Instagram. And so I kind of begrudgingly did it and didn't even realize um, at the time how much fun I would have with it. Um, but it was definitely something that I had to kind of get used to and find my voice on social media. It's, a, it's um, kind of letting people behind the curtain of your business and being able to sort of um, show them what you do on a more of a daily basis, kind of a sneak peek. And that was kind of how it was established um, in the way that my journey in social media, having an editorial background, it was a lot of fun for me because I got to kind of style things and, you know, pick the angles. And so I got to really nerd out. <laughs> I learned later, I was like, oh, this is really a lot of fun. Um, but then it was also like, oh, wow, it's something I have to keep up with too. So um, I have a love-hate relationship with it for sure. Um, but it's, it's been, yes, yeah, about seven, seven and a half years, so. Wow, thank you. Renee, how did you get into social media? When did you start? Uh, what motivated you like starting that undertaking? Uh, to be honest, my husband is in the media business, so I have a little bit of help with that. And also, um, we, I originally started looking at Instagram, and I was very um, hesitant to post anything that was raw. So everything was originally, I feel like we planned more, and we we tried really hard for each and every post. And as we've evolved, I feel like now people want to see more raw. They want to see more in the background, daily life. And so we've, we've evolved a lot from when we first started. And I feel like people really enjoy to see the, that every day, not the, not that everything's perfect, not the final product, but the process to get there. And they want to see more of your backgrounds of how did you get there? The, the raw construction pictures, the, um, the picking of the fabrics, just the whole evolution. So it's something that we've definitely grown um, from where we started. We started and I feel like we were making this perfect picture on Instagram. And now we're a little more avant-garde with what we post. Mm, thank you. Kathy, how did you, you know, um, get into this whole world of social media? Yeah, thanks, Benny. Um, you know, similar to Renee, um, what Renee just said, um, you know, we sort of started it honestly as a way to like share our projects and brand with other people that who didn't really know us yet. Um, but I think over the years and exactly like what Renee had said, you know, people I think initially saw it as a, as a platform where we would just like look at really, really beautiful glossy photos. And I think um, the more that people adopted to using the platform, they started wanting to say, well, I think part of it was like just the advent of social media in general, right? Like everybody's mm -hmm. trying to basically say, okay, well, that looks great, but like, how can I get that? And so I think the realization of going from like glossy to um, how do we show behind the scenes and how somebody who on the other end can say, wait, maybe I can make that and do that on my own. That's kind of been different um, in terms of how we've even pivoted, um, you know, how we use social media. But ultimately um, what's motivated for us is really just to honestly like share in this community, you know, to share what other people are doing, to share a little bit about what we're doing, what our brand's doing, what I'm doing, and also what other people are doing and really just, you know, creating that community. Mm. Um, 
now that Kathy, you and Renee, both of you have mentioned, you know, the raw aspect. Um, let me go off script, off script already on my second question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Kathy, I would love to hear from you. You know, do you do you mean by be you know raw or behind the scenes? Is this for you just the making of something, but it's still the picture still needs to be like of top quality, or is it that it really can just be like a shot that you post? I think I, um, that's a really good question. I think it's a blend, right? So I think like ultimately you want to show like the the final product, which is obviously you know like like where you want to land, right? Um, and I think in between getting there, um, I think people really want to see like humor, humility, like mistakes, um, you know, process, um, and the good, bad, and the ugly. And if there are sort of any way in which you can, you know, tell that story, I think that's what people are resonating with right now. Um, and so we always have this saying, um, can we, and even our customer service as well, it's like, can we be just more radically authentic and more radically transparent um, without being, I mean, of course, within your comfort level, right? Like you yeah. don't want to like, yeah, so <laughs> within a guardrail, yeah, of whatever you're comfortable sharing, so. Yeah. I have something to add to that, Benny, also. Um, just, you are creating a brand and you are creating um, on, on Instagram with the posts that you are putting on there, the posts stay and you want your page to look pretty for when potential clients and followers come and see that. But a lot of the more raw pictures we do as the story. Um, so the pretty, real, wonderful, beautiful pictures are usually posted and they stay on our page for our potentials and so forth to see. The story is where you get your more raw and fun and people can follow along. And I think that that's, that is a difference is the story we do a lot of not as pretty pictures and, um, and a lot more of the in the day, in the life sort of pictures. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. And also, you know, if you do a construction side picture, you probably also tidy up a little before you would post it, you know, like a, a good yeah. light. Um, um, so um, I was wondering, you, you, you know, you all have so many followers and, you know, I, I feel like I'm doing a fairly good job too, but like, you know, um, obviously I, I have much less followers. I'm always wondering how much time per day you really end up investing if you do it at such a level that you guys do it. Fran, maybe I just start with you again. Like, be honest, how much time do you think, you oh. know, are you investing and how much time do you think should everyone invest per day? So I will um, just let you behind the curtain and tell you, I don't post every day. Um, I really don't. And I would say um, I probably, Instagram is one of those things where I feel like I probably should always be doing better it's like the recipe that you keep working on and you're like, oh, that worked. Oh, let me try this. Okay, next time I'm gonna throw in cranberries and see if the cookies are better. Um, so I feel like it's, um, I would encourage those that are um, joining us today. It, it's, you're never gonna feel like, oh yeah, I crushed it. That's it, it's over. It's always gonna be something else that you feel like you have to continue. Um, for us and for our business, I would say our followers are, we are so um, always appreciative of being noticed for our creative work, but my feed, our feed would be different if, if it was solely about the followers or the likes. And I would say, you know, when we were in quarantine, I started a series of daily dose um, and we, you know, it was just videos, fun videos and some pictures of just how to do things like at home and style things like, okay, well, how do you style your sofa or how do you do uh, cut a branch and put in a pretty bottle? It was very like um, just small little tips here and there that I didn't necessarily have to, wouldn't, didn't have time to do on a daily basis when I was, you know, really responding to client needs. So I would say if I am solely trying to build my followers, then I would do things like that all of the time. But the cornerstone of our business is really responding to clients and being their advocates on job sites and things like that. So 
Um, I love the rawness because I feel like we've really gotten a great response from our followers when I sort of, it's kind of a come alongside business tool, but it's not necessarily like the cornerstone of our business, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Thank you, friend. Yeah, totally. Kathy, how much time like do you spend on, on social media, mostly Instagram per day? Yeah, um, I would say I personally probably spend about an hour or so each day um, just on engagement and keeping up with the community. Um, I think, um, you know, for those out there listening, if you're hoping to obviously, you know, build exposure, I think investing in engagement is like, if you only have limited time and we all have limited time, right? Like, you know, commenting back to your comments and DMing your clients and supporting other designers, because what we've also found out, like organically supporting other designers has led to what we've seen, what we call engagement pods. And so like mm -hmm. designers that support other designers, we're like, wait a second, like we're all friends here. And now keep in mind, like, you know, we've been doing this for a while. And so we've made a lot of incredible friends. And today we're going to make two more here, you know, sorry, five, you know, total three more here. And it's so lovely to just like you know meet people and then like eventually you see them on social and then eventually maybe down the line you know you see them in person at market and you know you do create these like actual real world like IRL experiences off of social media and it's um it's really fun like when you support other designers these engagement pods kind of organically happen and it sort of um helps you guys sort of continue to grow beyond that if that makes sense um so engagement pods are basically pre-assigned pods that you guys support each other and DM and comment and save and like on each other's um, posts and things. But I will be honest with you, they've all been organic. Um, they've been friends of ours that we've had since like 2015 and it's been wonderful to see. So if you only had a small amount of time, you know, spend your time on it, engaging your community, I would say. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Renee, mm -hmm. do you see that the same way? Do you also spend an mm -hmm. hour of time? Um, <clears throat> well, with mine, it takes a team. So there are, I'm probably on there an hour a day. I also have um, Hillary in the office who is on there probably an hour to two a, a day. Um, and then we also have some of the girls when they're out on job sites or if, um, if we're doing a delivery or uh, snap some extra pictures for our stories. So, it, and it depends on the day and what's going on. Also, there's some where um, we don't have as much to put on as others and other days there's a lot going on, but very much like Fran said, my, my business, we're a small boutique firm and our number one priority is our clients. So um, we spend so much of our time with the, our clients and customer service that it's, this isn't my main rodeo. And um, so we, we try our best, but like Kathy said, those, um, the conversations are the biggest thing. So there are some very supportive people that are out on Instagram who um, they'll repost something that you posted and they have more followers than you. And all of a sudden overnight, you'll get more followers. Um, and that's something where try to engage, try to say more than just, oh, cool, or that's pretty. Try to actually engage in conversation. And that helps tremendously. Interesting. Thank you. Um, you know, when I speak with people about it, it's, you know, you... I think it's very interesting and also helpful to really speak with people about what they want to get out of it. You know, do mm -hmm. they want when they speak with someone that they just are checked out on Instagram and you, all you need is actually 10 posts to understand who you are as an interior designer, or do you want to gain clients there, or do you want to gain, you know, a, a following so mm -hmm. that you can, you know, present product. You know, so I would love to ask every one of you, you know, and, and Renee, maybe I just, you know, keep going with you like what's yeah. your goal what what are you trying to get out of your instagram um a project uh so that again has evolved um it started out where it was just building a brand and it was brand recognition so um i didn't really expect to get clients from instagram and i i honestly didn't feel that um it was even a tool to get clients. It was more this whole different platform of brand recognition and just getting um, getting your brand out there and, and showing what you do on a daily basis. Uh, now it's kind of pivoted. And I think a lot of it has been due to the last year where I have gotten a lot more clients from Instagram 
um, than I ever have, which is amazing, wonderful. I think a lot of my clients, um, they go there for inspiration and then they start, you know, everyone falls down the tunnel. Uh, and so now I'm starting to get a lot more from Instagram than I ever have in the past. Interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, Fran, what is your, what's, what are you trying to get out of it? Is it finding clients? Is it something else? So I, I love the aspect. Yes. And I would say um, we do, we are approached with potential clients through Instagram and social media. That's a really fun thing that, um, that I really have enjoyed through that relationship is sort of they're able to see the and feel the flavor and the personality of the studio through our Instagram feed that they wouldn't necessarily have had that lens without it. Um, and so that's really neat. It's almost like a um, kind of a Carrie Matheson, like, oh, what are you doing now? Oh, I wonder what she would do with my living room, or that sort of thing. So that's been really fun. Um, I love the aspect of, you know, if you're funny, we laugh a lot in the studio. We have a lot of fun. I want our feed to feel funny and, you know, lighthearted at times. It can be such a serious business. And so I love the idea of kind of, you know, debunking that a little bit and saying like, It's a huge investment, but this is, it can be um, not as stressful as you might see. So yes, we have received, we've actually gotten um, a lot of clients through our um, Instagram feed, which is really fun. The predominant one is really word of mouth, but I would say um, the relatability for someone who even wouldn't necessarily hire us to do, uh, to do their home, we can still have that connection and they can really kind of see and be inspired by our work. And that's really, um, Uh, that's been a really fun thing for me, like through the DMs and hearing feedback from people who wouldn't necessarily be clients. And then also seeing what our social media feed goes to, it really kicks it all to the website, which I had no idea that relationship, um, which then they become more serious about maybe, you know, us talking about collaborating. Interesting. So. Very interesting. So, so it is kind of a funnel for you for future business. For sure. Um, Kathy, is that also your, uh, you know, what you what you're doing, or do you have another goal with it? Uh, um, I think, you know, we sort of have, you know, the KKH core values, and we always go back to, you know, our five core values, and our first core value is, you know, our mission, and our mission is basically, and everything that we do ladders back up to this core mo notion of does this help more people love where they live. And so, you know, so everything that we do in business, you know, whether it's who we hire or um, how we engage on Instagram, it's like, are we actually helping more people love where they live? So I'll just say that first is like, that's our first brand focus. Um, and then secondly, I think, um, you know, I think in the early days, it was sort of like, um, like if, and you, Fran and Renee and all the interior designers out there listening, like if you're doing it right, the majority of your business is going to come through word of mouth or referral, right? And then what ends up happening is I think they check your Instagram as validation yeah. to be like, oh, okay, like mm -hmm. I kind of like their style. Um, mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, so that, that, that happens and we started to realize then there was a community beyond that of just like, okay, they're, you know, we're getting business from it. Um, and we realized that the community is actually where we find a lot of our artisans and a lot of our vendors and mm -hmm. also like pillow makers and curtain makers. And like, actually we like, believe it or not, we recruit interior designers out of Instagram to come work with us. And so we have about a team of 40 interior designers right now. Um, um, and a lot of them, came from referrals of referrals, but a lot of them actually came through people that we're friendly with in the interior design community. So, um, and we're always constantly actively looking for new interior designers to come work on our platform. So, um, you know, just designers we admire, vendors we admire, artisans we admire. Um, and it's our way to sort of share that story and like pay it forward. Like, you know, we're interior designers. We've built sort of a platform to help other interior designers do their job better. Um, we want more people out there to get access to amazing, incredible designer goods that we found. Um, so it's a way for us to share our story, connect with artisans, vendors, and interior designers, and ultimately, you know, hopefully fulfilling our mission of helping as many people love where they live. So that's That's kind of the, the, the end goal. And I love, yeah. that. I love that point that you're not just, you know, looking at, you know, your clients, but also like your peers and who is behind you, you know, with workrooms and so on. Because, you know, as soon as you have a Zoom, is a, you know, Instagram client who doesn't live in your typical city, 
you need a workroom there and maybe you have met them already through through Instagram. And so, so I really love that we're idea. We're of, one community. We're yeah. one community. Yeah. We all help each other. It's extraordinary to see. Yeah. Something else I'd like to add, Benny, to what Kathy's saying is when I first started Instagram, I was actually really scared to share um, vendors and I was scared. It was like my secret. And I was like, oh, I'm so scared to share these. And, and I was a little um, guarded and complete wrong attitude with Instagram. With Instagram, you need to support your artists. You need to, um, you need to make them shine. And it is, it's the perfect platform to find all of these unique people that you would never find, or it would take forever to find. And you should be sharing it and you should be supporting others. And I've changed within probably, I'd say over the last five years where now it's, yeah, share it and yeah. share it, share it, share it. Don't be scared, don't be guarded. I think we've all been there, no? Like, sorry, Fran, go ahead. No, I was just gonna add, I love that. And I think that's so true for, especially if you're in one city, so I'm in Birmingham. So it's really been fun for me to tag so many other vendors and artisans from places around you know, the United States and across the pond, like however we can, it's really fun for us. And it's that connectivity through your business is so powerful. And they say like, oh, wow, she's she's working with so-and-so in LA or New York or wherever. And then it all of a sudden, your the tentacles of your business have spread. And then you have, oh, have you worked with them before? And so you really see, like, like Kathy was saying, the community that you develop and you're able to cultivate uh, through your social media is so powerful and not limiting it to what Renee was saying. I mean, that's, um, you know, in old school, like in New York, you know, it was almost like you wanted to kind of hold in all of your vendors. Mm -hmm. You're so afraid, like, oh, you know, they know how to do this upholstery so well. And now it's like, you really want to root on, especially through, through COVID the last year that we've mm -hmm. had, you want to cheer everyone on. <laughs> we want yeah, especially. I, I also really loved Renee, your point saying, look, if you are like going on Instagram to find inspiration, how, how can you then hold yours back? You know, like, <laughs> right. yeah. You know, yeah. Um, right. we've True. got a lot. We've got a lot of questions already, and I would love to, you know, shoot out some of them. Um, so, and then maybe you know, whoever goes first, um, you know, answers them. Uh, Leah asks, "I'm really good at posting pictures of pretty spaces I have worked on. However, sometimes it feels a little tone deaf to be posting pretty pictures when there's a lot of heavy stuff going on in the world. How do we balance that?" Hmm. I say you're already doing half the battle, which is you have pretty pictures to post. So that's a, that's like ninety percent of the work. So you're great. Um, mm -hmm. The last ten percent, which is feeling like you're potentially going to be tone deaf, is really lean into that. Like lean into to to feeling that sensitivity. And if you feel like you know it's something that you want to address or you want to talk about, um, you sh you should um, you should mm -hmm. you should certainly verbalize, you know, your sensitivity to the fact that you really want to share something beautiful and you're hoping to inspire other people in light of, you know, the tragedies or whatever is happening. Um, but that you're really, your, your goal really is just to brighten somebody else's day um, and just mm -hmm. be authentic there. Um, so I hope that helps. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. I would add to that too, Benny. Um, I love what Kathy said. And I think it's, um, it, people find it refreshing when you're genuine and vulnerable on social media. They don't anticipate it. And so it's really um, a fun thing. And I think it's a really um, that connectivity, you know, being genuine and real. So lean into that. Absolutely. To Kathy's point, mm -hmm. one of, I mean, my, my most successful post was um, losing my mom to COVID. You know, it was like, but I, I couldn't not talk about it and I had to share. And so people, you know, obviously came right into my personal life and knew that that happened, but it was also uh, so many encouraging DMs and so many ways to, for people to say, How, wow, she's still working or doing this and she has a family or whatever the struggles might be. I think it's, it's really powerful. And I think I'm speaking on behalf of everyone, friend, that we are all very sorry for your loss and oh. that we really sending you lots of strength through the, through the okay. cords, your cables. Um, then, you know, Johanna asks, you know, do you all feel any stress or pressure when it comes to engagement of each post or just, just like, do you take it how, how it comes? Renee, how do you feel about that? Oh, no, I don't have pressure. Um, I honestly, 
it's funny because some of the ones that do really well are not the ones that I would expect to do well. So you just, you know, you're living your daily life. You just throw it out there. And I mean, you're just trying to communicate and, and you're, you're just doing what you do. So no, I don't look at them and think, oh, this post was really bad or that post was great. Um, I don't think about it that hard. Okay. Um, then Jenny asks, do you recommend including personal things to make a page more engaging? Do you recommend including other things like art or film or food? Well, I'll start with that one because you ended with me. Um, I'm personally a very private person, so it was very hard for me to open up and to bring in some of my personal things, but you are building a brand and part of that brand is your personal life. It's who you are. And I think Kathy had said it earlier, it, it's um, you're inviting these followers to kind of understand who you are and what you're about and how Francis, you know, they have a lot of fun in their um, in their office and they want to portray that to their clients. It's, it's the same thing. You, you need to give a little bit of yourself and you need to open up and, and show a little bit of your, your personality and who you are personally, as well as work, because it is part of your brand. It's who you are. Mm -hmm. I think I, I would add to that, Benny, the relatability, don't underestimate the relatability. So the more that you mm -hmm. sort of reveal um, in terms of, we know what, and you get to control what it is that you reveal on, through your social media platform. But um, there's there's a way for people to kind of see a window like, oh, she's a working mom or, oh, she has dogs in her house. They're on her upholstery. Wow, I wonder what fabric she uses. It's all, it, it's all linked throughout lifestyle. And that's what's been so powerful for us is conveying those lifestyles. I mean, if people spill things in your house or if you kids are walking around with snacks and they're thinking, oh, wow, she's, she's got to deal with this on a daily basis. I guess she can speak to if this fabric is, is a Michelin fabric, as I call it, you know, with kids and dogs mm -hmm. and families. So it's mm -hmm. all far reaching, lots of tentacles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Um, someone else is asking, how do you find the balance of sharing the behind the scenes, but not giving away too much detail about the client's custom project? Um, Kathy, I don't know how you feel about it, but is it, is it really about giving a much to where, uh, uh, is it really about giving a, a, too much away or? Yeah, you we have clients that uh, choose not to, you know, be included. Um, in reviews and social media and pictures, even if we change their names and change the location. Um, and so that you'll just, you know, like that is what it is and you'll never be able to get past that. But in terms of like showing behind the scenes, I don't generally have a really big problem with it other than the fact, I think the reality is that you just have to, you know, balance sort of how much do you think people are really going to want to care? Like, I'm like, well, do you, like, if I were looking at this, like, would I be interested in looking at this? And sometimes I'm like, no, I don't really want to look at two by fours with like, you know, nails exposed. Like, it's not <laughs> interesting to me. I'm more interested in something that's a little bit more polished than this. But um, so I think it's, um, I think it's okay. It's really up to you and how your clients I know that's like not really an answer, but for me to just say it's up to you, <laughs> but you've got to just, again, like lean into what feels right and feels good. And if you just do that, leaning into your authenticity, then like, it won't be so hard to just keep doing you. You know what I mean? Like, you won't be like, oh, did I do that right? Did I not do that right? Like, you know, I think also going back to like the personal stories, I think, you know, I don't know if you guys look at your engagements and have, you know, ways in which you track your performance, but, you know, we, we definitely tested, you know, we would test sort of like if we did um, personal stories versus um, stories that weren't personal, how they did. And, you know, we had some really interesting takeaways. And so, you know, these are things that once you, once you realize like, oh gosh, like my audience really doesn't want to hear from me. They really don't care about what I'm cooking tonight or like, or they're like dying to see what I'm wearing. Like then you can like work on that, you know, again, yeah. within your own comfort level. But yeah, yeah use, your, use your metrics tools for sure. Very, I, I think that was very helpful, Kathy. Uh, um, how do you see, and now I'm getting to my limits, uh, friend Renee, Kathy, I don't know whether you work with that, but uh, Nicole asks, and I think it's a good question, do you see any value in creating reels for Instagram? Uh, this is something we talk about internally so much. Um, 
I, I think that, you know, with guides, with reels, with in feeds, with stories like there with TikTok, like there is a way you're, I almost want to say you're reaching kind of a different audience with all of them, to be completely frank. Um, now I think with stories and in feed, it's a, it's one audience. And I think with reels and guides, it's maybe a different audience. Um, and, it, and there, there is a probably a crossover there, but there's, there's this audience, there's this audience and there's the crossover. Um, I find reels personally, you know, fairly high production, especially in home. I think it's easier to do in fashion, um, but fairly expensive to do. Not expensive, but like, you know, the way in which we would like to produce a reel would be fairly, listen, we haven't totally figured, you can go on our Instagram, we have no reels. Like we tried doing one where like, I was like doing a shelf and then undoing a shelf and then like, um, or like, or like putting lemons into like a pot. And it was like, oh my gosh, that is so boring. <laughs> like. Please don't ever do that again. <laughs> just just make it a GIF movie. Um, so yeah, we haven't really figured it out. So if anybody's figured out how to like real in home, I, I need advice there, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if someone knows, send, send Kathy a DM. I'd like to- And yeah, me too. You. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to know too. Yeah. All right, so all of us on this call, please, if you haven't figured it out out there, you know, let us know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, Kathy, you mentioned earlier, and I would love to hear, Fran, yours or, or Renee's um, opinion on that, um, Instagram pods, you know, basically the group of people who promise to follow and comment on everyone, you know, in the pods post. Um, Renee, Fran, do you do that? Did you find this helpful? Would you suggest one joins that? Or like, how do you find it? Or, you know, explain us a little bit that that concept. Yeah, I, I, oh, go ahead, Renee. No, you go ahead first, you go. Oh, I was just going to say, I have not ventured into the pod thing. So that's really interesting. I have definitely um, cultivated, I feel like, just an organic friend group of designers that, um, and they're in other cities, you know, and so that's been really fun to cheer one another on through, um, and it wasn't necessary. it was very organic, like I was working in that city, like, hey, can you recommend like a, you know, a um, workroom, we're here, and, and so then it just kind of turned into, you know, a friendship, and so that's been really fun, um, as far as like a um, sort of, you know, specific pod for following, I, I would, I would be interested, it's, it is overwhelming to me a little bit in that, you know, it's like once you sort of do that, um, you know, obviously you want to, um, you know, be diligent in, in cultivating those relationships. And so you also want to, um, you know, if it's just about your following, then you kind of move into a different strategy, you know, so at some point, I think it's hard to kind of, you know, you have to kind of decide, okay, am I just going to get followers or am I going to focus on, you know, the content or um, other aspects of, um, of how you're going to build sort of your brand on social media. So for me, I focused on some other things, um, our photography, our um, responding to DMs, things like that, I feel like um, can, can cultivate those things and build those relationships just as well as the pods. But y'all may speak to other, you know, you both, both may have other ideas. Yeah. No, I have done that. I'm not very good at it, honestly. Um, it's hard to keep up with because you are, um, it's, it's a wonderful platform because you're supporting other uh, artists that you love and that you want to support. Um, it is hard to keep up with the constant um, just commenting. So I have done it, but it, it's hard to keep up with. Um, it definitely works. Uh, it, you know, they'll have, <laughs> a post where they'll, they'll post something that you've done and then it goes crazy. And overnight I'll have another thousand followers and it's, it's fun to watch. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> that's crazy. Wake up the next morning and it's going gangbusters, but um, it's hard to keep up with. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I'm realizing as we speak that, well, I knew that before that Instagram is a commitment if you want to do it right. But I also, I'm realizing, you know, talking to you that, you know, those pods is a lot of commitment and you do a lot of stories and, you know, it's very easy that this whole topic takes over your, your day. So, you know, if my, if I was Benny Frauen Interiors and I have an Instagram account and I have 250 followers or maybe I have 690 followers, something like that, um, you know, and my goal is to get to, let's say 2000 you know, and I don't really need so many more, you know, I, I, I have a good business going on and so on. 
what would you suggest? Um, I don't know, Kathy, maybe I start with you. What would you suggest I do? You know, so just, just that I find this balance between not becoming now the next uh, social media uh, yeah, queen. Thing. For sure. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, in terms of that, that sort of, you know, delta of growth, um, maybe the best way to do it is actually just true, pure organic engagement. Um, I think, um, so going back to the pods for a second, you know, the pods are, are organic and they are really helpful because we actually follow, I think like maybe that we follow like thousands and thousands of other accounts. And, um, and I have in my collections, like accounts that I love and posts that I love, but then I think the pods really helps me because sometimes I'll miss like their posts and like, I'm always like, what are they posting? Like, I want to know what they're posting. So it helps. It's like a reminder for me to be like, oh, these are the, these are like my, my, my tight knit friends on IG. And we want to make sure that like, we all see what each other are doing. We all support each other. Um, and once you're actually I think the interesting thing is once you're actually within one of these pods, your engagement doesn't actually go further up. Like it's because it's like, once you've received that immediate sort of like, I'll call it like hit of new followers from that new user, like you're kind of, so it's not a way to like augment growth from here. Like it's, it's, it's a, like it, it organically happens and you'll get the followers organically because you guys share each other's work, but it's not a continuous growth, like if that makes sense. So continuous mm -hmm. growth really is like just posting like great content, sharing other people's, um, you know, work and, and, and really just, you know, like being a part of the community. Um, so, so to go back and answer the question of how do you go from, you know, like maybe 400 to 2000, you know, that won't take a super long time, as long as you spend, I, I think really what it comes down to is great photos, um, being authentic and engagement. I mean, I know it sounds so like fundamental and like, like there should be your tip or a trick, but like there really isn't like you like think about like think about your life for a second like how do you make friends like you make friends by being a good person right like you'd be a good person by like you know saying hello and you know um telling people that you admire their work and you know and sharing their work and telling them how much you admire their work and i think it's just being a you know it's it's you know getting followers is similar to like just making friends like in general right for the most part <laughs> Um, so you say, you know, basically, you know, every second day a post and then, you know, do half an hour engagement or something like that. And I, I'm going to get there pretty soon if I, if I wanted to get there. I think, yeah, do your engagement. You don't have to do an engagement pod, like just, you know, follow the accounts that you love and you're probably already, even if you don't think that you're working, like before you go to sleep, you're probably on Instagram anyways. I'm not saying you, Benny, but, um, but like you're probably, I am. <laughs> yeah. You're probably on Instagram before you pass out at night and you're probably liking, you know, other people's stuff anyways. And so you should just, instead of liking it, just comment, you know? Um, yeah. I find so many incredible designers this way. I'm like, who are you? And they're like, oh my God, you're commenting. And I'm like, yeah, why wouldn't I? Like, cause I'm like obsessed with what you're doing. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you. And uh, Renee, there is a question here um, from che Jackie asking, do you tag vendors or fabric houses in your posts? And you spoke yeah. a little bit about being open. So maybe you just answer this question really quick. Yeah. Yes. Um, so <clears throat> there's a couple of different ways. And um, you, you can either do like the hashtags at the bottom or when you push on the picture, you can show, you know, this fabric is here, this fabric is there. Um, we do try our hardest to um, put the... Uh, whoever it is, whether it's a fabric house or into our post, because that helps build um, your followers. Because if there's somebody that's following that fabric house, then that fabric house is going to follow you and it's going to continue to explode. So it's a way to get more followers by definitely tagging other people. And let me take one, uh, one question on there. Um, using others designers pictures as inspiration, is this a go is this a no go uh, do you think everyone should do that how they think what do you what do you think i don't do it probably as much as i should um but i don't know what do you girls think we love it i think you support the community i think it's really interesting i feel like our industry i think sort of since the early days has been predicated on like 
like what you were saying, Renee, before, like you don't share your resources, you don't share, like, I don't want to share with you my secrets of how I did what I did. Um, and there's this sort of like veil of opacity, you know, around the interior design world, even like with pricing and like how you charge and how you do what you do. Um, I think that if you are going to support your community, you always have to credit them. You always have to credit the photographer, anything, the stylist, like if you, if you have the information, I mean, we will go out of our way to like research and find if there's a stylist or if there's a photographer. So that we, um, that we make sure that we tag them because again, to your point, like we, like we want to show the work and we want our entire community to see their work. And so um, like there's, there's, yeah, we, we love it. <laughs> but wasn't the question if we post other designers' designs? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we post a combination of our designs. UGC, Do you? Yeah, UGC, and we also post other designers' work as well. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll always, you know, like always credit, you know, Fran Keenan, design by Fran Keenan, architecture by whomever builder, you know, stylist, or if there was a stylist or a photographer. Yeah, so we'll always credit them. Yeah. Fran. Yeah. I, oh, so, sorry, Renee. I have so many questions. That's why, you know, yeah, we have 15, we are probably not going <laughs> to, pretty sure we are not going to answer them all. So I think, you know, I'm going to shoot now a little more like questions and then, you know, one of us answers, but I see that, that our listeners have, have a lot of questions. So I would try to get us through as most as we can. Uh, friend, to you, you know, are you using, so Lisa asked that, are you using your iPhone for pictures and vi uh, videos for the majority of your posts? Um, or uh, do you use more professional photography and videographer uh, for final pretty pictures? Um, so we do both. We do both. I, um, my husband's really cute about buying me the latest iPhone. He's like, this is the greatest, you know, <laughs> this is your tool in terms of just having the, you know, your, your camera on your phone as good as you can get. That's really, I do think we are at the mercy um, as creative people. We're at the mercy of good photography. So you can do a really beautiful room, but if the photography is not up to snuff, then you will not receive um, the feedback, the positive feedback that you really were hoping to get. Um, mm -hmm. So we really, we invest a lot of um, time and resources into our photography. So to be professionally shot for our website and then um, post, I would say 50% of, um, of what is on our, our social media is from my iPhone. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, for sure. Thank you. Do you use anything more than Instagram? Like, what do you think about Facebook, Clubhouse, uh, Pinterest, uh, you know, others? Kathy, I don't know, Kathy, Fran, Renee, who, who answers first? Pinterest is a huge organic channel for us. In fact, Pinterest was a huge organic channel for us before Instagram. And so we've definitely doubled mm -hmm. out our efforts on the Pinterest channel. Um, you know, so that I think it's like, you know, our community is so visual and so they love seeing how things are put together. So um, Clubhouse, we just recently joined. I have a team of people like researching that. Um, I got to tell you, I'm like, I don't know how anybody finds time. Like, who are these people that like sit in a clubhouse all day and listen? I'm like, I have no time. <laughs> how do you have time to just like, <laughs> like be in a room and listen to random people talk? I mean, I don't, I don't think that's random. And I think it's like the new form of podcasts. And I think it's fascinating. And I think it recently it's like 6 million users already in Clubhouse right now. But I personally haven't found just like reels. Like, I'm like, am I old? I'm like, I'm old. I'm like, I haven't figured this out yet. So um, if you figured out Clubhouse and how to use it, you let me know too. Okay. Um <laughs> You know, someone someone else asks, you know, with the Instagram algorithms changing constantly, do hashtags matter if you are trying to grow your brand? I post content every single day for almost three years straight, but my Instagram growth is slow. Renee, what's your thoughts on that? It's uh, kind of what I said earlier is you can either do the hashtags or you can where you poke, um, poke the picture and it shows who... I definitely think that it helps and that you, the more people you include and the more hashtags and so forth, it's, it's going to grab and more people will, will find that picture. Um, <clears throat> but honestly, I think it's, again, it's, it's your engagement. So you have to make sure you're engaging in others 
posts to get your numbers up. And I think a lot of people don't do that. And sometimes I'll be, I mean, I do, I sit in bed at night and I go through and I do like, and then sometimes I'm like, oh, I got caught up in a picture and I have to go back again and, <clears throat> and say something, or I forget to like one. So I think that it's the engagement is the big thing. Mm -hmm. And just coming back really quick, uh, Kathy, you know, um, TikTok, is that something I was just thinking about it? <sighs> Um, like I said, we tried before and it was like, I was like, this is mortifying. I was like, I can't, I, no. um, okay, so I don't know how to do school, it. Getting old. I haven't figured out how mm -hmm. to apply makeup really quickly or, you know, got it. Like maybe not so much in the home, you know, as you know, maybe not so much in the home industry. Um, Andrea asks, um, do you worry about offending people uh, with whatever post you post because there's in a lot of cases, someone might feel, friend, is that going through your mind every time you post something? Is that not really on your mind? Well, I think you, um, I definitely try and keep my feed very positive. Um, I know that there are some do's and don'ts out there. I, I've, um, I really probably focus more on the do's than the don'ts um, because I find that people are, you know, we're all just looking for inspiration. And so I think sometimes you naturally sort of edit the don'ts when you just um, post about what to do instead of what not to do. Um, there's certainly times when I've thought about doing, <laughs> and I've thought about saying certain things, but I don't ever want to come across condescending in our feed. And I think that, um, you know, that's something that I try very hard to be aware of and just say like, everybody's just trying to do the best they can. And they may not know that their windows aren't as beautiful as they could be, but you know, those types of things. I think um, you, I always want to leave with a, um, leave everyone with a positive taste in their mouth. Yeah. yeah. And I see everyone else is nodding. So I think uh, we are all, you know, agreeing to that. Thank you. Um, Someone else asked, how do you branch audience? For example, having high engagement on architecture posts and low on interiors. Uh, how do we break into interiors without boring the audience? Um, you all told me you kind of pivoted and changed over the years. So I'm sure you all have great answers to this. Kathy, do you want to start? Yeah, I'm sort of like, I guess my first fundamental question is, um, why are you pivoting, I guess, because your audience is specifically loving your architectural posts, right? So are you pivoting because your actual business structure has changed and you no longer do architecture? Or are you, and by the way, I will say with an adoption of anything, you will see a mark decline and then it'll pick back up, right? Um, I would say this is almost with like any thing that we've ever tried, like whether, and not just social, but like whether or not, um, you know, we, we started out to be like, yeah, no, we're not a lighting retailer. We don't sell lighting. We only sell furniture. And, you know, then we launched lighting and lighting was terrible. And now lighting's our number two category. And so um, I think like with anything, it just kind of sort of takes time for adoption. Um, you'll see sort of kind of the reversal with Sir and Lily where, you know, they were a baby brand. They're like, we're never going to sell furniture. We're only going to be in fabric and textiles and baby. And then a met like now they sell a ton of furniture that's their number one category now outside of bedding and so um if if interiors is your passion it's where you want to go you kind of just have to slowly pivot there and like know that it's not going to perform immediately but again lean into it be yeah. you and just do it and by the way i just was thinking you know coming back to the raw <laughs> pictures because we also have some some questions on you know pictures and so on i just took a picture of us you know of my screen with all the behind the scene, the Q and A thing, and my questions that I wrote down that I that I will post after. Um, so I think you know, but honestly, you know, everyone who is listening could you know post this, tag the four of us, you know, as a story or something like that, and see what happens. Just as a thought, I was just thinking about, you know, how do you gain content? You know, I think it's really about you know, kind of understanding that this moment or a different moment could be caught on a picture. Um, but coming back, you know, to to maybe the last question, even, um, and that I would love to hear from all of you. Do you sign? Do you have your clients sign a release uh, to post their picture projects, or do you, like, how do you deal anyways with taking pictures to start with, and then how you use pictures? I think that's super helpful, because I think if you discuss that at the end, it's probably too late. I don't know, Renee. Do you want to start? 
Sure, absolutely. Um, I have a standard letter of agreement that I have all of my clients sign. And in the letter of agreement, it says that I have, um, I own any pictures that are of their their place and that we have the right to post them. It's something that I talk to my client about at the very beginning is I, I tell them um, that we'll do shots on Instagram, that we'll do professional photograph of the home when it's complete. And I just ask them if they have any issues with that. And then I usually just find out what their guidelines are. There are some clients who are extremely private and they do not want any photographs of their homes, of their fabrics. They don't want anyone to see anything. So you just have to be upfront with your clients at the very beginning and make sure you know what their comfort level is so that you don't upset them. And then majority of the clients are usually really happy about it and they want you to to go, go for it. And they let you do whatever pictures that you want throughout the whole process and then do the photographs at the end. And some of them say, just leave my name out of it or the address. And some of them are very interested in even getting their name in magazines um, and having their place published. So it just depends on, on your client and what their comfortable level, le what their level of comfort is. So you say early conversation and yes, integrating that in your commitment form or contract or whatever. Friend, yeah. do you do it the same way? I do. It's in our contract. And so early on, they know that we have rights to, um, to publish um, if, that, if that opportunity came, you know. But I do try very hard to be sensitive to my clients in this way. It's, I never want to seem like I'm trying to use my clients to promote my business. I always want, you know, at their expense. If they're uncomfortable with it, I want to lean into that and and you know we really try very hard to to not you know reveal names and locations and that sort of thing and and um you know people followers will ask you questions where is this house where does you know that sort of thing <laughs> you have to be very you know oh I, I, that would be unprofessional for me to share that with you but um so i do want to be very cognizant and, and you know sensitive to our clients i mean they're the ones that are keeping our business going yeah Thank you. Well, the hour is already over. I can't believe that. Um, Kathy, Renee, friend, thank you so much. Um, I've learned a lot. Uh, I also learned that I'm going to post now more raw pictures on my stories um, and that I have to get back into it anyways. I feel like, you know, during lockdown, so, so little is happening. I don't even know what to post. Um, but um, I'm sure we are sharing all of that. Um, Thank you very much. It's really been an honor and a pleasure having you um, on this panel today. And um, I can tell from the level of engagement that uh, you really nailed it with everything you said. So thank you. And thank you to the audience for listening in. In a month, we have the next um, a business success webinar. Uh, and again, you know, feel free to DM me um, with suggestions. We are always happy to hear um, what you guys are interested in. So thank you, Kathy. Thank you, friend. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, and Benny. Thank you, guys. I see you all soon. Thank you, Ned. Bye, Annie. Bye.